I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Two Nerds, One Quest. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that audio ever gets captured anywhere, does it? Because it just goes mm -hmm. to the music, right? When you uh, For the Patreon podcasts. So that is like a moment where I'm free to say just about anything. When the opening Norm. roll is going? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when the opening roll is going, okay. Uh, inside jokes that will never be known. <laughs> I am your host and DM, JC. And again, rambling for quite a while. Uh, here with my, well, the other nerd that helped start the two nerds, one quest uh, on the ones and twos, controlling the dials, Tom M. Norman playing Aaron on. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, Word to your mothers. Came to drop bombs. I got more rhymes than a Bible got Psalms. And we'll stop there. Of course, the <laughs> the next nerd to join the dynamic duo. Are we the dynamic duo? Did I just really say that? Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. Ryan Kuka playing Crixus. I see Tom wearing the Robin tights, though. To be honest with you, I just do. They're trying not to say shit like that when I'm stuff like that. Dang it. Oh, I'm drinking my coffee. I spit it out all over the screen. I mean, you're not Jeez. entirely wrong. <laughs> he's got some pretty funky pants on today. That's for sure. Oh yeah, it's Christmas time. Um, it's, yeah. it's Christmas. He's he's got the Christmas prison oh, pants. Oh, adorable. <laughs> yeah. And then that last voice you heard, of course, is the lazy dragon, the mod. Oh, there isn't a real. I was gonna say the mod with the most, but that doesn't work. <laughs> The modest with the most. The genius. The lore master, the role checker, <laughs> Jeff Williams, playing Doc. Yes, no fancy pants for me this morning, but uh, <laughs> thanks for that shot. I'm on a different camera than the stream is, and it's a really awkward down here. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm sorry, did I stick <laughs> my nuts in your face? As a matter of fact, no pants at all, huh, genius? <laughs> hey, above the, above the waistline, right? Keep your camera yep. chin up. <laughs> so, um, those of you that have never joined us, which if you're new, hey, welcome. Um, oh, we're sorry. We are working our way toward, <laughs> um, damn, brain farts suck. So you got to turn around and grab the book. Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. Working our way up towards 10 towns currently coming out of the Dragon of Icespire Peak adventure. Last adventure found our intrepid crew leaving a uh, hastened campsite from a blizzard after being separated by a by the blizzard and fighting a dragon. Uh, making their way north um, saving Ellie from a pit where she nearly was dropped in and confronted with a large feline bear woman screaming woman style screaming cat thing <laughs> and you guys headed north towards fire shear encountering some cubs of something similar was there something that happened between there or was it really you guys just kind of camped, packed up camp, <laughs> got moving, dealing with the sunlight. Yeah, I mean, we... Yeah, it really was. Harvested it was a little just... bit of worm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then on your way to... Oh, you, you guys actually got into fire shear. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. remember we set up... So we got into fire shear. We gave our dogs over to some guy that smacked my dog, and I didn't like that. Oh, that, yeah, that dog. Oh my gosh, Aaron was pissed. <laughs> yeah. I, so, side note, that really made me mad. Apparently, based on my reaction and watching it. Back. Oh yeah, I could hear it on the re-listen. Sounded upset. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. No, no, not whoops. Do that. That's no, I'm, I mean, I mean, that's why I will do crap. Like, I will entirely <laughs> make bad people for trying to emotionally engage you in the game. Go with it when it hits you. Or it hits them. So, um, yeah, interaction with the Kennel Keeper, and then you guys ended up in a tavern uh, playing Bardice, which 
did end up happening with, with not in character, but we did get together the week, a couple of us, and play a little bit of bar dice and have a drink, which was fun. Um, How is this? and we left it there. You guys, you guys needed. You were looking for a map. Inquired about a map. Um, inquired about a uh, about food. Um, and got the name the Leaping Lucrata. Uh, it was a restaurant two doors down. Um, and then you're also given the name Tharkis Grom when asked about a map and understanding that he is one of the heads of the three founding merchant houses in the area. Mm -hmm. So, you had a night of drinking and playing bar dice. You wake up a little groggy, uh, slosh that they couldn't get back into their room. Um, I assume at some point you stumbled over to the Leaping Lucretta, grabbed some food, you know, bar closed food, <laughs> cheese curds, fat dog. A fat dog? Oh, Jesus. Dog. Nope. Nope. Once and only once have I ever had a fat dog. And once and only once. Yeah. Only nope. once? Nope. Dude, those were gut bombs. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But that's what you do after <laughs> drinking. Yeah, but no. That's why you go to Taco Bell after drinking. That's why Taco Bell exists. No, I been to, I've been to Taco they found Bell. Their niche. They're owning it. I've been to Taco Bell twice in my life, and both had disastrous results. Mm. It's not, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not long term health food, but uh, <laughs> chips and cheese at like two in the morning is just right where you want to be. Yep. It's, it's, Agree to disagree. You don't make right, the decisions when you're drunk, is what we're saying. <laughs> so you're all able to gather downstairs. Um, did we did we have a place to sleep? Um, you ended up through the course of the gambling. Uh, mm. Found your way into a room. Like he couldn't win to save his life, and so instead of buying you shots, at one point he offered you a room. Which is kind of, I mean, it's a couple of, uh, really honestly, just a couple of mattresses laying on a floor upstairs. Mm. You get the feeling that it's kind of where he throws the drunk people. Gross. That every, everything was clean, but there was a lingering smell of bile in the room. But it was free, so you guys took it. Ew, ew, ew. <laughs> Right. There's like a like a scented candle or something trying to cover up the smell and not succeeding very well. Yeah, we stopped at yeah. ba uh, Bath and Body Works before. Kind of like when you go to a hotel that might be kind of skeezy when you're road tripping. You stop someplace, buy a candle, set it up in the hotel room. So it kind of takes the smell of death and hooker out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, wow. I, don't know, I, don't know where, I don't know where you're staying, but uh, I've been trying to avoid those places. You're, you're my head's going he says death and hooker my head's sitting there going yeah, bed bugs if you're going to a skeezy place bed bugs and then i'm thinking yeah you got to buy a plastic sheet but then that sounds like something completely different <laughs> falling right in line with the death and hooker i mean in all three cases you need a plastic sheet true death <laughs> and bed bugs <laughs> there you go yeah i know you're probably putting death and hooker in there nor but death hooker and bed bugs is <laughs> they so all you, go together right full circle we're back in the bar early a.m bartender's behind the bar he looks like he's like he's got some sort of boiling water on a on a kettle and he's <clears throat> you see him actually like filter something through uh what we'd known as coffee but you, you don't see that too frequently in the south in this world Mm. Takes yeah, over yeah, yeah. like a creamy <clears throat> liquid and pours it in there. That sounds delightful. Mm. Sounds like a pre-show conversation. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <clears throat> I have it on the mind now. Yeah, long live chocolate bombs. Yep. So, what would you like to do? Drink that. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, 
You want one? So I think first order Indeed. business, guys, is to go and find us a map. Yeah, let's make a uh, let's make a list of things that we're interested in. We need a map so that we can uh, be a little more clear on where the hell we're going here. That's the back. And then uh, build out a plan up to ten towns on what we want to do once. <laughs> We, any... we have one more. Uh, well, I'll wait till we get the map, but I think we talked about there being one more pit stop town in between, and that's about it. But do we want to check? Do we want to check? To, do we want to check to be sure that we have all of our everything that we need? Food and is there any weapons or anything that we need sharpening or purchasing? Any new armor? I think you guys kind of took that round and. Um, well, kind of, not really. <laughs> I was going to say, kind of took that round in Luskin, but it ended up being other things. Again, I mean, I think we're getting to the edge of the world. I'm probably not going to have anything better than what we've seen. Mm -hmm. But uh, you never know. There may have been a lost party of adventures that left something behind. <clears throat> we can check sure. when we get the map if they've got any special items. See if there's any unique shops in the area. All right, so you guys head out and you're looking for... Looking for Tharkis Grom. Yeah, you were also told Hammer Hammervar House. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're looking for a Hammervar House uh, building. <clears throat> uh, make an investigation check, both looking for a Hammervar House and like any sort of shop, weapon shop or anything like that. Four. 17. Still 11. 17 and 9, you said? 11. 11. And close, Norm close nine. had 17? Yep. Oh, 9? God, where did I hear 17? No, I did have 17. I said right. close to 9. <laughs> oh, okay. So you had the 17 and you had 11. Where did I hear the 9? It's weird. Made up. Anyway. Yep. Um... Oh, you know what? Ellie, Ellie is against the world, too. I should have dice out for her. And here I was so prepared and had my computer hardwired in and everything, and I was super happy. You were logged in before I was even yep. on? I was prepared today. Got and coffee, hit the bathroom, everything. And then I forgot the dice. <laughs> like, the most important thing when you're playing D&D. &D. Oh, hey, I know Norm saw these. My secret Santa kicks ass. Not only did I get socks, but I got a set of metal dice as well. Oh, Lord. I'm like, holy crap, I think they broke the price barrier. For... Yeah, it felt like it. It feels like it for sure. So let's dump these out because I don't want to use those. I want to use the metal ones because they're cool. So Ellie has a... Oh, she's not so hot either. Um, Honestly, this is really fucking weird. <laughs> Nine. He had the nine. <laughs> I knew it. Oh my god! Wow. Something That's tells me when that, that happens. Something That's tells creepy. me she's gonna get so, hit so hard later in the episode. It's gonna reverberate back in time, and you're gonna hear nine. Yeah. Oh my god! That's oh, that is creepy when stuff like that happens. The dice tell the. So story. you're looking around. Um, you are able to find the mirror bar. Mirror bar? No, hammer bar. Hammer bar. <laughs> well, the thing is, is, there's a note here that the main headquarters of the hammer bar house is in Mirror Bar, which is another city in the south. <laughs> so the That's hammer right. bar house, you're able to locate the hammer bar house. You do also find a blacksmith, um, as you were looking about as well. Now you find them almost at the same exact time. <clears throat> Alright, so can we just walk in or do we have to like knock? Is there Which way are you going? Hammer bar? Which one? Hammer bar house? Uh yeah, you could knock on the you can knock on the door, it's closed. Um it's kind of a it's kind of a built like all these buildings. As you're walking down the street, they aren't wood. It's cold enough to support like igloo style ice houses, and most of these are. 
Um, the doors tend to be some form of wood panel that is not necessarily on hinges, but pushed into the opening. Um, you don't notice any hinges on it when you knock on it. Um, it holds. It's like jammed in the snow and holds. But from the night, you can see the wind and snow has been kind of pushed up against the door. So that when they pull that away, it's going to kind of hang there. And it's kind of what the doors actually sit in are held in place in the door frames. Hmm. So you knock, Crixus, I said, or you motion that way. Yeah, no, I, I'll knock. You can go up and knock. Uh, you hear a voice from the other side say, just a minute. <clears throat> and there's, there's a sound of like someone grabbing, like fists hitting the door or whatever. And then there's a, <laughs> as it kind of pulls away and the whole door pulls away and kind of sets it to the side and goes, may I help you? Uh, you can, sir. We are travelers looking for some sort of map to the Ten Towns area. You want to go to Ten Towns? Here, come inside, come inside. It's cold out there. And you feel the warmth actually kind of pout pouring out of this igloo towards you guys. As you step inside, it is actually very warm. The floor is um, dirt. It's packed dirt. Um, he pushes the door back in and um, kind of sets it and just make sure, making sure it sits there. Uh, he kind of wipes his hands off and goes stands behind the counter. There is actually a fire going in a stone fireplace. It's one of the few things that is um, stone. It's in the center of the room and has kind of a funneling um, to try and funnel the heat and smoke directly up through the middle where there's an opening in the roof. But the, the fireplace is given off a, a fair amount of heat. You notice that the insides of the walls are all slick. The, you don't see like the individual blocks that it was built out of. It's kind of iced over and sealed off and created a a enclosed room that is maintaining heat very well. You're actually pretty warm when you walk inside with all your gear on and everything. Such an engineering marvel, it feels odd to have the door as something that's removable. I think <laughs> there would be a more efficient way. Crixus yeah, thinks. Tried to... Oh, <laughs> okay. So you're looking for a map. You're, go you're going to 10 towns, really? Get many people going to ten downs. Everybody's Indeed, got a place to we go. Have, we have business to the north. All right. Um, well, I, I we have something back here. Hang on a minute. He starts digging in behind the counter, and he's and he's here, and he pulls out this massive book, and he flips it open and it's got leather pages and he's flipping it by and he's just flipping through it's literally maps uh and he's there's something in here that should uh, that's close nope and he, you see him get to the end of it and he kind of looks like damn it wrong one and he puts it back and he grabs another one and puts it out and starts flipping through it and he goes ah here we go and he flips it open there's an it's not a perfect map. These are look like they've been inked onto leather. Well, someone's been on a dog sled out and about, like they're scouting mm -hmm. the surrounding areas. And he he takes it and kind of looking at it. He says, "How soon do you need it?" Well, how long is it going to take you to get us one? Um. And how long and how much would it cost to to make it a rush? Cal? This little gnome lass comes walking out from the back. She's got all the, her big, like, gray brown bun kind of sloppily flopped together. She's got like six pencils in that bun, um, and one behind her ear. And she's got these little spectacles on. And cute little round face and kind of wrinkles in the corners of everything. She kind of looks at me and says, yeah? How long would it take you to make a copy of this one? She grabs this little stool and brings it over and climbs up on it and kind of looks and puts her hands on it. Yeah. 
And better part of the morning, maybe. I mean, mm-hmm. if they want the exact replication, better part of the morning. But, but if you just want the highlights, I can, I can probably bust that out in, in I don't know, like an hour or so. Uh, I think I'd like it as detailed as possible. You come back, come back around lunchtime. Yeah. Yep, we can do that. Okay. Um, it's... Include any other valuable information that you feel like would be good to know as we travel in that direction. <laughs> she kind of looks up at, at him and is... Uh, I don't... I'll see... I'll try and include some stuff about wildlife. I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and yes, yeah. And so she grabs this book, she kind of picks it up and puts it over her head, and jumps down. And one of the pencils falls out on the floor. She just ignores it and goes walking back into the room and uh, starts working back in the room for this. Uh, she doesn't she doesn't know much about the outer land. She's just very good with art and replication and she's got a mind that is like a trap door. I'm sure if I told her anything she'd remember it forever so I could be careful what I say around her. Um <laughs> indeed. But yeah, that's also she doesn't have a filter. There's like no social like filter with her. She'll just say stuff that comes to mind. Um I think that's a no I thing. I know people like that. <laughs> ah, I see. Uh well the the map will be um yeah, she's taking the better part of the morning. Two gold. It'll be on a nice leather piece. We'll have it rolled up in on like a scroll case for you as well. Um it's kinda of protected from the elements. We'll also uh lacquer it so it, it's 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 a special lacquer. It doesn't stiffen it, but it um, protects the ink from the snow. That is a reasonable fee, good sir. All right, so then we'll see you. I'm I'm actually going to ask him uh, before he says that. I'm going to say, do you know anybody that can fix a spyglass? A spyglass? Oh... Around here, not likely. Uh, we don't get many ships here, especially once the freeze happens, which I don't know why I looked at my watch. He doesn't have a watch. <laughs> well, according to my left wrist, it's a... Uh... It's a hair past a freckle. Uh, <laughs> I get um, a rash when the freeze comes. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, ac- according to my joints here, um, the freeze should be hitting any time now. Once that freeze hits, there are very few ships that we see. Um, there are a couple that do... Icebreakers and whatnot, but most people don't take the chance. Um, but fixing a spyglass, honestly, you'd probably have better luck in Muskin. Hmm. Good. <laughs> I good. do not believe <laughs> we're <laughs> headed back there, sir. <laughs> <The> disappointment <laughs> on Aaron's face. Well, you know we. Yeah, if we happen to swing through there on our way home, I guess. I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. There's no reason that we can't go back there, Ellie says. Yep, you're right. Yep, 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 you're right. Why should there be a reason that we should not go back there, Crixus? She kind of winks out (laughs) out of his vision. Although it's really obvious what she's doing. <clears throat> um, Doc, Doc would like to ask then if, uh, you know, being being the head of a merchant house, maybe you see some interesting fare coming through here. Is there anything that you have that uh, that that we could uh, maybe acquire? Uh, I'm not the head of the merchant house. My name my name's Danden. Oh. You thought I was Tharkis? Wow, that's that's flattering. Um, Who's Tharkis? Oh, he's the head. He's the head of our merchant house, of Hammer of our house. He's a dwarf. Um, he's not 
around very much. He stops in sometimes. He actually a lot of this is his work. As a hobby, he goes out and scouts the area. Indeed. I haven't seen him in a while. I hope he's okay. So he does not stay here often? No, he travels a lot. He goes back to the home base at times. He's got other branches in varying places. Um, when was the last time you saw him? But he's been around him? here for a while. Oh, about a week ago. So he said he was going out more scouting out to the east. Hmm. Something about trying to get a mountain range scouted out in the paths through the mountains. Hmm. Indeed. Hmm. All right. Well, the question still stands. Do you have any uh, any items for sale that might be of interest to adventurers? You want to buy silver or gold or maybe some mining picks? Other than that, I have maps. Maps is kind of our our business, although it's his hobby. But Cal's really good at recreating them, so we made a small business out of it well are there any other maps that would be of use if we're going up towards the north other than a general map uh, not that I uh, he kind of starts flipping through the book and he said no if you're heading towards the ten towns area that will cover here to ten towns basically would uh, um, would you or your boss be interested if we use your map and find a way to add to it in our travels would that be of interest possibly one second and he goes back and comes back and goes okay here's the leather he uses and this is the pencil he uses be careful it will smear um it, it's grease based, so it it it, it don't fold. Well, he folds, but I tend to like it when you, when you roll it and put it in a. It doesn't smear as much for some reason. So, um, here's a, a a spell scroll, a scroll case. Here's the leather. Here's one of these grease pencils. If you do happen to get off the map in a direction, um. I, I would like to, yeah, if you can bring it back, bring back more information I can compare against the information I have already and just have a more accurate map is always a good thing. Wonderful. I'm just kind of giving him the side eye like, why the hell would you want to do that? <laughs> Roll an insight check. Rolling insight check. 19. So you're looking at this whole conversation. Um, you're not sure what Doc is thinking. You might be, you might be, with a 19, I imagine you are pretty sure what Doc is thinking. And I'll let uh, Jeff explain that. But what you're picking up from his side is that he doesn't fully trust the maps. <laughs> that there may be some imperfections or inaccurate things in his maps he trusts them enough to sell them but he doesn't you get the idea that he's not been there he doesn't know and he the only opinion he's ever gotten the only maps he's ever seen have come from Tharkas so he's kind of interested in seeing what a, a similar map would look like for, drawn by someone else and and you get the uh, the feeling from uh Doc, I almost said Graz there. You get the feeling from Doc that you're uh, that he's just trying to make a potential ally for some point in the future that may or may not be hel helpful. Hmm. Interesting. Plus, he likes free stuff sometimes. So if we get some ink and leather, you know, it's more ink and leather we had a minute ago. Yeah, you can you can add. Like either I don't know if map making kit is in there. You can custom any item into there. 
cartography pack. Yeah. <laughs> Cartographer's pack, I think, contains a bit more than what I gave him, though. <laughs> Fair. Okay. Yeah. Nothing fancy. Nothing Shitty fancy. leather and pen. All right. So All we'll right. see you guys in a couple hours. Again, looking at his watch, he doesn't have one. There's a sundial on there. <laughs> As he walks around the fireplace, the time changes real fast. Yep. In the absence yeah. of other merchant shops, perhaps we should check on the dog. Uh, yeah. We... Do we want to go to the smith, smithy real quick? Or is that something? Are we good? It's, it's right next door, so we might yeah. as well. All right, we got time. I'm gonna go out. next door. Oh, okay. Yep. I assumed you all head out at that point. Yeah. Yeah, we're done. Um, that. You go over to the smithy. Yeah, yeah. It's at the door side. He comes walking over and he takes the door and he kind of kicks it back into place. And um, actually, you hear him swear as he hits it and it kind of slips and does one of those things where it's kind of spinning on two points. It's like, damn it. <laughs> Kind of cocks it right and pushes it in there. Um, <laughs> sometimes the things I say to describe things. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, it'll get clipped out later. I notice everyone you smirk on that. And I'm like, dang it. Uh, you make your way across the road to the, the smithy. Um, there is a burly uh, Goliath in there. Just big, massive, big arms. And they're, um, he is sweating, um, working over. He's got a large, um, basically pot that he looks like he's melting stuff in, and he's pouring liquid metal into a form, um, that is just bars. Hmm. And you realize as he, he kind of, he pours it out, he, goes, he sees you guys, and he says, uh, Hey, one minute, one minute. And he kind of pours out the rest of the form into another, and fills another form. And... Oh, all right. Yes, I, I got to do that all at once. Otherwise, um, that will harden back in the um, pot. And then it's just, then I got to heat it all again. And I got to pour it. And it, it just had to pour the whole form. Sorry. Uh, how can I help you? We're looking to see what you may have for sale. For sale? Do you got any wares, anything that you're looking to get rid of? Anything that, yeah, anything that you sell? I could sell you a mining pick or two. Um, it's town and a mining pair. <laughs> That's a mining town. It's, we don't use much else, even in combat. <laughs> you ever take a mining pick? Mining pick probably, probably not. It usually kills people, but. I need so Crixus recalls that he has an axe head without a handle and he Choom. I need a handle for this. Oh, I could do that. I could do that one of one of hang on a minute. And he kinda of goes in back and he, he's rummaging through things and he, all of a sudden you hear just a bunch of clinking wood like stuff and he pulls out like two or three longer handles. Like, like something like this. I mean, these I, we use these for the mining picks, but it's the same concept. I can just like, whittle it down, fix it, and put the splint pin in to hold it. And it will... Is that good? Something like that? I mean, it's not fancy, but it would work. Yeah, Chris just will look at what's available and try to find the best quality wood, the sturdiest. This the axe head is pretty hefty, so all the handles actually look like really good handles. The the wood's been shaped appropriately. It flares at the end to give you the hand grip um, on it. Uh, a couple of them actually have like finger um, indentations where your fingers would rest in it. Varying sizes. Um, you can find one that does fit your hand nicely if you want like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's let's uh, pick one out from from the offerings and ask if you know what the cost would be to to have that applied. Uh, it's not going to take me long to do. I mean, the handle work on the handle. I don't know, maybe five gold. That would be acceptable. Please proceed. And you got one there you like? Yeah, I'll Can't show him the one out. with the with the grips. Okay. It's a good choice in the cold. These these things can get slippery, and having those finger holds helps. Um, and he goes in back, and he's you actually see him. He's working on the other side of a large counter. He's got your head and he puts the axe together puts this um ha he's hammering a pin in there to split the wood to hold the axe head on if you ever actually looked at how they do that um he melts a substance then and then pours it down to kind of fill in all the gaps in there and uh then he goes over to a uh what looks to be a grinding wheel, but it's very, very fine. And he proceeds to sharpen, buff the axe head out. Um, he, the last thing he does is he gets out an oil, and he oils down the weapon, the handle, and comes to you after probably about a half hour of work, if you sit and watch him do this the entire time, and presents this. I will this. find it fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, it's like watching, uh, what, what the hell's the name of that? Uh, Men at Arms on YouTube. If you haven't watched Men at Arms on YouTube, go do it. If you're on, if you're watching something like this, you'll enjoy Men at Arms. It's dudes um, making weapons from video games and movies, and it's, it's amazing. Um, I will lose myself for hours watching that on YouTube. <laughs> That's not a sponsorship. I just truly love that. <laughs> I truly love that YouTube channel. Um, but he presents this, what looks almost to be a brand new axe to you. Um, awesome. There you go. That should be it's, uh, an interesting uh, symbol there on the head. Yes. That, yes. That mean anything to you? Not to me. Have you seen it before? No. Just it's cool. I, I just, the symbology, the, the lightning in the tower, it's... I thought it might be your sigil or something. I didn't know. Maybe come that way. Excellent. Cool. Well, five gold then, and here you are. And I'll give him that six, okay. just for the fantastic. All right. And for appreciate. the show, basically, with our audience. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. I'm gonna get back to. Uh, my bars here and I, at this point Aranon uh, you don't need a perception check for this you've picked up on this while this whole thing was kind of going on and they were kind of enthralled your eyes start wandering around the shop as they do when you're in a shop um, you realize that it's he's smelting or not smelting but barring out gold and silver that's actually what he was pouring out was gold bars little gold bars into it are there any within reach mm -mm. No. is so it's all behind like a counter mm -hmm. it's it's all over there's like a very clear workstation set around this kiln that fires this and the tail's actually lying around it. Uh, make a perception check for me. <laughs> 21. There's a set of runes on the floor that like where there's a gap where he could walk through the tables to work in this area. 
there's literally a set of runes on the floor and if and with the 21 you actually see it carries underneath the tables and it's it encircles you assume and encircles the entire work area that he's in i'm gonna tap ellie and say have you do you know what those runes are for Um, no, I. It's well. I mean, it looks like a teleportation circle to me, but I don't know a lot about the Arcana. Um, she rolled a seven. Oh, I want to turn to Crixus then, without saying anything, and and ask Crixus the exact same thing. <laughs> you want to make an Arcana check, Crixus? I mean, Ryan gets it, but mm-hmm. Crixus does not. You don't want to make an Arcana check for it? No? Okay. Crixus rolled an Arcana, but oh. he rolled a one. <laughs> Crixus is not so Crixus. I think he got a headache thinking so hard. That Cr- Crixus is too focused on the axe being made? Because <laughs> this is all happening while this axe is being put back together. He's just like, huh? What? <laughs> so I'm going to... I'm going to ask him if I can take a closer look at how he does his forging, like if I can come behind his counter. Uh, stop. Uh. <laughs> yes. Um, give me a minute, though. Okay. Okay? Yep. And he wait, He finishes the axe and presents the axe and everything. Yeah. He says, okay, uh, you wanted to see like what I was doing prior to. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, does he have like tools and stuff against the back of the wall? No, this whole thing is kind of a, it's a circle in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. There isn't a lot that hangs on the walls here because the walls are all ice. Um, Okay. I understand. So they don't, I just, I understand this to be a tree trunk of a man, right? Like this is like tiny luster basically. (laughs) This is, yeah, he is eight feet tall and probably about 400 pounds. And, and this is muscular Hagrid. Um, he's he's up there, like, he's there. So, no, I he, just want to make he, sure he, that um, was clear. There's there is an intelligence behind his eyes and a concern, a visible concern on his face when you ask him this. Oh. I just want to make sure this is clear what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Ain't an idiot. <laughs> um is there anything on the back side like where he would turn his back to grab and actually my second question is is there any gold or silver that is within reaching distance that is not on fire that would burn me <laughs> <laughs> almost like they're caution like you're looking around as you're looking around and it starts dawning on you the way everything is set up everything is very in the open very visible um there's clean sight lines to everything inside this this building even this forge where there's this bucket is is there's a single suspended chain system that is high above this all that allows them to move that bucket with these massive gloves and pour. Um, And you're starting to understand and putting together that the runes on the floor are probably some sort of magical protection for that circle. You, you, as you're looking around for gold elsewhere, you're not seeing any precious metal outside of that circle where he is working. Um, And he, they've been stolen from dude. (laughs) Like they, this town realizes they're a target. There's a reason they know a pickaxe to the head will kill a man. <laughs> There's a reason they use pickaxes. All right, I'm just gonna say, well, you you seem busy. I will 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 leave you alone. Doc is visibly disappointed. He was hoping for a tour. You you but... can. <laughs> You can actually see there. There's a tension that you might not have seen him take up, but you actually see him relax a little bit when you say that. Thing. All right. Hope the axe works out well for you. Has a sturdy feel to it. Thank you, good sir. All right, I'm gonna walk out. 
You were going to try I'm and like... take something from him, weren't you? Ellie says to you. <laughs> Who, me? Ernan, come outside, yeah. Yeah, you. Me? Why would you think that? Yeah, I was curious as to how he did his forging. Right. It was twice your size, Ernan. There's only so much healing I can do. I'm glad I'm glad you backed off. <laughs> Every man takes a kick to the nuts the same way. I had I got the feeling though that if you remove a blacksmith from their town, we would be battling the entire town on the way out. He's got a point. I cannot argue that point. Did we go get the dogs? I didn't like that guy. I think the sooner we can get them out of there, the better. I agree. So, uh, she, she starts leading the way right away. Like, you get the feeling that she's been nervous about the dogs this entire time. There's been a tenseness. You get to the uh, kennel. The guy's like, "Oh, I, th I thought you guys would have been here earlier." You gross. Kind of wipes the wipes the sneeze off on his apron, <laughs> or on, on his pants. Honestly, he's not wearing an apron. He doesn't have a reason for an apron. I'm just gonna uh, look at him and shake my head. So you had. You want provisions for the dogs, <clears throat> provisions for you guys. <sighs> Let me get is your it sleds. the same bag or is that a different bag? <laughs> <laughs> it's two two different bags. He pulls up and sets out there. Uh, he goes and starts getting your sleds out. Uh, he brings out Ellie's sled. And as he goes back for the next sled, she's taking like a rag out of her pack and wiping down the handles on the sled. <laughs> kind of setting everything up and getting the uh, harnesses ready for dogs and stuff. So. I'm going to I'm gonna whisper to Ellie, boy, it sure would be nice to have some hand sanitizer to wipe all over my body right now. That's gross. Yeah. Everywhere. Uh -huh. what? I need to... There's a spell that does that, and I don't know if I can learn that. There's a spell that will actually clean. Um, yeah, you need I, to figure that out. I feel that's I, a slippery. I, I, I feel like that's a slippery slope towards like OCD cleaning issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, how could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, you have a hypochondriac <laughs> and just press the digits every five minutes. <laughs> um. Oh my god, I almost want to make that character now. You make you guys may run into him or her somewhere. Oh my god. <laughs> kind of amazing. The complete opposite of this this dog handler. <laughs> this guy has no sanitary. <laughs> it, it... Spoiler. They're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> it almost writes itself. I just think of National Lampoon's European Vacation. Uh -huh. The hotel they go stay at. The guy is <laughs> flipping the pages. That's kind of what I'm thinking for this guy. Um, oh, man. He comes, out, he comes out with all the dogs eventually, and they are happy to see you. Um, everyone except Prince. Prince is less happy to see you and more just angry at him. <laughs> and... Um, he kind of hands the leashes to each one of you individually to hook up your dogs. Um, I'm going to take a look at Prince and kind of inspect him over and make sure he's fine. No. Right. Um, oh boy. Make an animal handling check as you do this. Prince is just a surly doggy. Nine. Nine. You're going over him. You don't notice anything um, out of the ordinary. Everything is still fine. Uh, Prince is still 
he growls at you. It, it's almost, based on how you saw him come up with the dog handler and how he growled at you, you pick up on there's a distinction between it. Like, you understand that maybe he's not mad at you. And he just, the way he growls at you is how he growls at you. There was a very distinct difference between how he growled at you and how he growled at the animal handler. And how he growled at him was very, there was a viciousness in it that isn't there when he growls at you. And you're starting to understand that maybe, maybe that's just how he communicates. <laughs> He's just a surly guy. <laughs> It kind of puts your mind at ease a little bit, both that you don't find anything and both that maybe maybe your relationship with this dog isn't as awful as you thought it was. Excellent. I'm going to hook him up in my sled then. Basically, he will... He will... <laughs> I had a cat that was a sourpuss. It was just grumpy. And my grandfather came over when I was like 13, 14. And my cat jumped up in my grandpa's lap and was sitting there. And would just lay there, purring in my grandpa's lap. My grandpa would go to pet it. It would turn around and hiss and... But as long as he left it alone, it would sit there and purr in his lap. (laughs) So he just left it alone. (laughs) Kind of, that's kind of the relationship I'm thinking that this... That Prince has with you. He's got this kind of... Like, you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone, but you're you're my dude. (laughs) Type thing. So you hook all the dogs up. Uh, there is no other. I mean, as you guys are hooking up the other dogs as well, there's nothing wrong with any of the dogs. They, other than the one hitty hit prince yesterday, you don't think he's done anything else to him overnight. They look well fed. They look well rested. Um, and you are free to do what you like. You now have your dogs. Uh, by this How long time. Till, uh... I, th- I was going to say, by this time, you're probably thinking the map might be close to being ready. Um, I'd like to head over to the restaurant and get maybe one good meal again before we leave. One nice warm meal. I'm down for that. Absolutely. You go do that. There's a, It's um, fatty sausages and um, potatoes. And they have eggs this morning from s- somewhere. You don't know where that came from. But it's it's a good, like almost like a skillet mash meal like the potatoes are kind of shredded up and fried in the corner and a couple of big fat sausages there with with a big pile of eggs all just kind of laying there in a plate seasoned delicious damn it now i'm hungry (laughs) i know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go from the podcast to making myself breakfast (laughs) (laughs) doc would have doc would have offered to go get the map while you guys uh set up the food thing and meet you there as soon as I can to save you guys a trip. Thanks, Doc. I appreciate that. Nice. Ellie elbows Aaron on. It's okay. Let him go. You could tell I was fine. contemplating following him, didn't you? He's fine. <laughs> yes. He's fine. Eat. You're going to need food. Hmm. All right. Fine. There are two things that go through your mind as she's saying this to you. One, you get the feeling that she understands why you wanted to follow him. You also are slightly hurt by the fact that she's allowing him to go, <laughs> but followed you <laughs> when you left <laughs> to go steal. <laughs> Man, thieves have feelings too, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just he look He looks like he could take a hit or two without falling over. <laughs> I'm just going to grumble. Am I myself. wrong? If you if you get hit, you rely on not getting hit. Well, I hope everybody if relies on hit, not getting get hit. Oh well, no, not everybody. I have a shield. I get hit. Rexus has a shield. We actually look do get hit so that you don't well that's just you ridiculous like i'm just when being you get hit do you do you get back up 
I've been known to do that before. I've also been known to lay and cry for a minute. I've also been known to lay unconscious for a minute and rely on someone else to get him back up. Hey, that happened to you too. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying it didn't. Likely happened to. Likely happened to one of all of us before this journey is done. I'm going to make it my goal that it doesn't. Honestly, that's always kind of my goal. But... It'll be fine. So you guys tuck into your breakfast here. Um, it's delicious. Oh my god, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, you head to the map makers, yes? No? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure where you were going. <laughs> Oh, we could play a whole thing offline if we wanted to scare Aranon, but no. Just goes to the <laughs> map maker, sees if it's done. Um, you get there, and uh, he pulls the door away. Um, invites you, and he says, uh, she's almost done. She's almost done. Um, uh, Cal? Yeah? Are you almost done with that? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm rolling it up. She comes waddling up from behind the counter. She's got the big spell scroll on her, her scroll case on her arm. She says, Here you go. One copy of a map to the Ten Towns region. All right. Uh, Doc will take it out just to, um, you know, make some kind of praise and also to check and make sure that it does look like what we're looking for. Um, yeah. Just kind of like, oh, it, this, it, this is really nice. You did a really good job on that. Thank you. I I'm I'm I like um, I like drawing. I, I I like maps a lot. This is actually really fun to do for me, and I don't get to do it enough. A lot of times, I will just take out a book and start making copies for myself. We don't have any of ten towns because people normally don't want to go that direction, um, especially with what's been going on lately. You you do have light, right? Like torches and stuff. It's like perpetually night there right now. Like you can kind uh, of yeah. our sky. Like you notice how it's kind of gray, hazy out. It, it's gonna get worse as you go north. About my understanding from uh, what Tharkis said is right about here. And she actually takes uh, another pen. She actually pulls one of like a pen or pencil marker thing out of her hair and. Grabs the second one and goes, Wow. I didn't know I had two up there. There's still three more in there. <laughs> uh, she said, Right right about here. And she marks on the map, It's going to come nighttime and you aren't going to. You won't have daylight at that point. Just, just so you're aware. Um, mm. no, that doesn't mean you don't have um, the, the, the Aurora Borealis. The, or the magic, the magic light in the air that I still I'm too scared to go adventuring, but I'd love to see that um, but you'll have that you'll have, you'll have stars, is what he says he tells me all kinds of tales about it um, moon sometimes, sometimes not but it, it, will, it will be like never ending night at that point most of us have pretty good night vision, so I think we'll be okay. But we do have torches along. Oh, okay, good. good. Well, good luck. Well, Thank you. I hope to blow it up. Did did they pay in advance? Uh no, no, they did not. No. Okay. Uh, Doc will pay the two gold. I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thank you very much, sir. Um. And she she kind of takes the two gold and she's like looking at it and. Kind of looking around. And she puts it in her hair. <laughs> He'll flip a silver and just say, this is for do for you for doing a good job. Oh, okay. She kind of looks at it, looking around. She kind of pats her clothes a little bit and puts it in her hair. <laughs> you get the feeling that if she undid her hair, a bunch of crap would just fall out. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then Doc will head back to the restaurant. All right, and then she turns to walk away. One of the pencils falls out on the floor, and she <laughs> just keeps walking. 
Um, he comes over, he puts the door back, and you head back to the restaurant, map and tow. They seem to be halfway into their meal, maybe a little more. Some of them finishing, at least finishing up her meal, like the last couple bites. Ah! Fuck! Get the map? I I wave the scroll case. Anybody I want to hold this? Otherwise, I can throw it in the bag. Uh, who's going to lead? Who's going to be the front sled? I think we need to keep our our parade the way it is with Crixus, me, Ellie, and then Doc. We should probably give Crixus the map then if he's leading. Crixus, do you have sure an issue can. with that? No, I should have the map to control our progress. No, I mean, do you have any problems being first? <laughs> oh, no. No. If they come for me, I will be the first stand against the dark. That seems really ominous, ominous. and <laughs> kind of fatalistic, and uh, I'll be close um, behind you, but my running speed may vary. Doc. Doc, the goal is to bring light to this land, not darkness. <laughs> Positivity. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying. I, I'm doing my best. <laughs> she be, she beams this big smile and this is a, a hopeful smile at you. And she kind of says, I know. <laughs> That's you. Did we lose Doc? Uh-oh. Oh. Nope, 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 there he's he there. I was going to say, it looked like a frozen genius for a second. No, I, I was thinking. He was thinking. Oh. No. And uh, Doc is probably, for every uh, for every sausage he eats, he's putting one in the bag for, uh, for the trip and kind of saving as much as he can. Okay. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Um, go ahead and roll a d6. That's how many sausages you pack away. Three. Yep. You got you gain three extra sausages into your provisions. Huh. Um, you understand putting them in, you're kind of wrapping them in napkins and whatnot and stuffing them in the bag. You understand that you'll probably have to eat these first because these are mm -hmm. more likely to go bad before anything else that you have. They're not really road provisions per se. Mm -hmm. Um, right. You guys good? Heading out? Um, what are you doing? I'd like to talk to Doc a second right. if Aaron and Ellie are lead, are walking out. Okay. I imagine Ellie would be getting up and having finished her meal, getting up and, uh, she actually says, that, yeah, I'm going to go make sure the dogs are ready and check all the harness connections again and Yep, I stuff. saved a sausage for for Prince. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> um, so you, the Ellie and Aranon head outside, and honestly, Aranon, you feed, you give Prince a sausage, and out of nowhere, you didn't even see it happen. You see, Ellie's got a sausage too. <laughs> Actually, she's got several pieces of sausage that she has taken, and she's eating all the dogs somewhere she stashed a couple of sausages you get the idea that she is going to care for these dogs probably out of all of you um she's got the most motivation to um she does look at you when she sees that you have a sausage for prince there's that just just for a fraction of a second a yeah, I kind of love this guy, <laughs> and it goes away as as briefly as it shows up, but you see it see her break at the soft spot. But she, wife material that one. <laughs> yeah, you, you understand that she is. Uh, in that moment, you understand that she is not. She's not over you. She isn't over you. You don't know if she will be over you. She's just hiding her feelings. Doc and Crixus. Crixus pulls Doc 
back and just says, Doc, before we proceed, are, are you comfortable continuing to use that busted mall? Uh, it's it's served me well in the past. It's it's big, it's heavy, and it does a lot of damage. But uh, uh, I mean, it's serviceable. I have this great axe, and I'm I cannot use it uh, efficiently. That is a great uh, I, axe. I would be honored if you would use it as part of our crew. Uh, I would be honored to use it, too. Uh, it is embossed with the sigil of lightning striking a black tower, as is my shield, but I'm, I do not know what that is yet. Uh, um, and hopefully, you know, we can find out as, as we continue, but uh, I find that it is a magical weapon, so it, it should provide uh, some... Uh, you know, a, a, a better option for you in combat. Well, thank you. I will I will try to use it well. And so Crixus gives a weapon, a plus one great axe called Bulwark Smasher to Doc. That's a great name for a weapon. All right. Uh, we're still inside, yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, if we were outside, Doc would probably swing it around just to get the feel of it a little bit, but probably not going to do that in the middle of a restaurant. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> be fun. He's got a decent enough head on his shoulders to even swing it around in a restaurant. He knows that. Yeah. All right. So, so you head outside. You notice that uh, Aaron and Ellie have the dogs already. Um. They are. They all seem to be in various stages of munching on some some bit of something. Um, but you guys are ready to go then. Brixis, you open the map. It's clearly labeled um, the Ten Town Regions Fire Shear. You need to head up kind of the coastline. You'll head up around a mountain range and into the Ten Towns region. Um, the the path has actually been laid out. Um, having been brought up that you were headed, someone said ten pounds, right? The map yeah. makers, yeah, yeah. So there's actually a line on the map, a, a suggested route to follow. Uh, you do notice that there's another line across that seems to be added after the map was lacquered. Um, that is kind of puzzling. You don't know what that is necessarily. It's across the trail before yeah. the ten towns. Yes. Oh, Mr. Okay. Oh, Mr. DM, yes. do you have a map for me to put I on? Was looking for it earlier. That's what I was trying to find for you. Oh, okay, nope, no worries. Somewhere. We'll get it, get to it to for me. next week. So. Yep, get it to me after the session, and we'll I'll put it up. All right. So, so I I'll I'll ask Doc. Was any context provided to what this is? And I'll point out the. the yeah. Line. The. Uh... Is her name Cal? Uh, she drew this on here when uh, when I went to pick it up. She said, "This is this is where the darkness is uh, uh. overcast from the sky. So uh, beyond this point, there will not be much for light." Um, she said, "Some s stars, some lights in the sky, and maybe the moon if it's not cloudy." So we should expect a not have a very bright journey. That's good to know. A little unsettling, but good to know. Well, then I, I suggest... Uh, well, based on the map, can I tell how much travel time up to the point of the darkness? Uh, looking at the map... Oh, make a survival check. So there's no real scale on the map. Eight. Hey, good thing we weren't in combat today. Ones and twos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, looking at the map, you you have no real good sense of how long it's going to be. It could be a day before you are. Hmm. Um, you have a feeling that once you, I mean, thinking about it, it it's not going to matter once you hit it. You're kind of resting when you want to rest because it's going to perpetually be nighttime. Right. Um, I mean, I just imagine it's it's a wall like. Uh... I mean, uh, based on what you've seen, you think it might not be a wall. It may be a gradual change. Hmm. As you move, based on seeing the sky right now, how it's kind of in that hazy eclipse-like state. Sure. And this this may slowly be seeping out of the area. Be one of those like when you're outside in the summer and all of a sudden you realize it's dark, kind of a thing where it obviously was gradual, but you all of a sudden notice it. It's probably yeah. more like that. All right, we'll fill up our water bottles and uh, let's let's get ready to go. Yeah, we, we got enough gas know. in the dog sled. Are we gonna make it that far? Put put. Yeah, crank the tail. <laughs> That's gonna be an ongoing joke. <laughs> I've heard about winding up dogs before, but it usually meant something else, and I was usually being yelled at. Not to do it. <laughs> Don't wind up the dogs. Accurate. So you get going out uh, on the trail. Uh, make animal handling checks, everybody. Hmm. I'm going to spend my inspiration because I never use it. Do it. Good idea. Oh. Six, uh. 16. Oh, no. Oh, I was going to say six? Nope. Eight, actually. Uh, that looked like a 14, but. Interesting. 11. Well, I turned a 2 into a 5, so 5. It's slow going. The dogs kind of understand where we're headed, where you're headed. There's that natural tendency to not want to go in that direction. So the morning is, or the beginning of the afternoon here is a little harsh getting the dogs rolling. Um, As you are moving on, um, make perception check. It's not snowing. Uh, it is getting darker as you move on, just by incremental. Shit. Dozen. Dozen? 17. Uh, natural 20 for 20. Um, Aaron, you see in the snow, kind of across the path, these large paw prints. Um, and that really kind of sticks out. Like, you see those. And kind of hard to miss if you're just kind of looking at the snow. But Crixus is looking at the map a lot and more concerned about where you're headed, that he doesn't see them. Ellie kind of looks and points. And you guys see them. Uh, Doc, what you see that no one else saw is that on top of the snow, there's all these little paw prints <laughs> that cross the trail. Um, Next time we stop, we'll have that discussion about what we saw. Tell that Crix is snow. These creatures are thriving. By every hour. Every hour or so. <laughs> Those dogs need to rest. Yes. Crixus needs to rest. All right, so you, uh, on your next rest stop. Aaron, on, would you okay, like to I'm going to I'm gonna let uh, Crixus know, uh, hey, man, keep an eye out for any large animals that may jump into your path. Uh, if you're looking at the side of the side of the path, it's got a lot of giant footprints. So there's there's something wandering around up here. Did you oh, these... Go ahead. How are these creatures thriving out here in this landscape? By eating things like us? I don't know. I'd rather not find out. Did you guys see the small tracks too? I did not. No. Were they similar in size and shape or different? When you say, do you see the small tracks too? Almost in response to that, you hear, Ow! and you look, you turn and look back where the sound came from. And there is a little one of these cubs that is pounced on a blackbird. 
and is tearing it apart. The bird is just not doing good. There's feathers kind of all over. The bird is not doing good. No, the bird is not doing well. <laughs> Rolled poorly on it. And it's not doing good. good. Code title. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, like you don't even hear the bird vocalize at all or anything. It's And then if you sit and watch it, this little cub just starts tearing the wing off and meat and there's blood and and how far well, Crix- away? Well, Crixus, this answers your question as to how they're surviving. Indeed. I'm surprised there's any other fauna left. I didn't hear that, Jen. How far away? 50 feet or so. 50 feet. Hmm. Everyone make a perception check. Are, are you hungry, Doc? Are you looking to... They're not clever. They're not clever grilling us, are they? When we saw them before, there wasn't just one. Uh, Eight. Nineteen. Seven. Aranon. You see it before anyone else. You realize that Prince is its target. It's stalking in the snow and you realize it's stalking Prince it leaps and screams this feminine scream you are close enough you get a reaction to this pounce towards Prince what would you like to do I am going to oh boy Like reaction, I can pull my sword and swing, or reaction like jump in the way. Like, is there a certain limit to what my reaction can be? Um, either one of those options would work. Or right. A combination of them. Like, if you wanted to jump in front and take a swing at it, a single swing at it, you could. You are it. Yeah, I'm going to uh, take out the short sword and uh, leap in the way and kind of thrust in its direction because if it's leaping at I'd want to yeah skewer it essentially mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and make an attack roll nineteen uh, that will absolutely hit it uh, so go ahead and roll damage on that Nine. Nine. All right. And does a 13 hit you? No. No. All right, I need everyone to roll initiative. Go fish. <laughs> All right. 14. 14. 14 for Crixus. 14. 20. Um, six. Do you six need me to roll nine. initiative too? Oh, plus one is seven. Ah, uh, yeah, please. Okay, ten. Ten. Uh, also, Mr. DMJC, should we put a pin in it here? Uh, just hang on a minute. Okay. Uh, I, I, I got plans. I you got, got plans. Um, you know, Trixie, got plans. I, I need at least initiative. She's got a plus one, I think. Or she's got a minus one, it's worse. <laughs> uh, but she is a cleric, so it's not a bad place for her to be. All right. So it is going to swing at you, Ernan, mm-hmm. again. Um, or uh, nine to hit you, which does not hit you, I am sure. Um, Grixis. Am I first? Yeah, after the cat. Oh, yes. God. <laughs> All right. Um, I am going to quickly survey the battlefield. What do I see for uh, creatures in my line of sight? Uh, make a perception check. 
uh, other than there may be more, but you see the baby one and you see the adult one. 19. Um, there is a second adult one that is on the opposite side of the... Like, they're coming in from opposite directions towards the dogs. Like, they were looking to pick off the dogs. Sure. All right, the, the adult closest to the dogs, I will cast first level um, Guiding Bolt. Okay, is that a saving throw then, or an attack roll? Um, it is an attack roll. Uh, 24 to hit. Mm -hmm. Hang on a second, I gotta look up something. No, this is kind of... I need a ruling on something. And... Survey says. Yeah. Um, Do we need to call Judge Judy? I just need to read this. <laughs> A flash of light streaks towards the okay. creature from Crixus's hand. Feel the power. <laughs> Are you attacking the one by Aaron then, or the other? The other one. Um, the think. adult. Yeah, not there's, the pup. There's two two well, adults. There, there were two Aaron and see an adult that were flanking the wagon. And the one pup. Yeah, so I just had indicated the adult that's closest to the dogs. So if that was perceivable. That would be Aaron's one. You did notice the other one, but the one that Aaron is fighting. All right. Yes, that hits. Okay. Um, 12 damage, and the oh, next okay. attack has advantage against that creature. All right. Because it's shimmering like a twilight vampire. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it there. It wasn't working the way I thought it was going to work. <laughs> um, hmm. But yeah. These cats are kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested. The, there is something about uh, it being a, an attack roll or a saving throw. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That was. Mm. No. Oh. All right. Well, it's definitely an attack roll, and then mm -hmm. now I'm terrified. So <laughs> let's see what happens. Hey, you you set up a good spot if Aaron on attacks because with giving him advantage, sneak attack works. So that'll okay. work out really well. That's honestly a good opening move for yeah, kind of a rogue. Give him advantage. Excellent. All right. So cool. we're going to fight the, the screaming kitty cats to start next Do they have a name? I mean, they're called Craig that... Cats. They do have a name. They're, they're called Craig Cats. Hmm. Separate your so knowledge they're... from your character knowledge. Okay. So, one, so the one... Out, look it up, but you can if you want to. So the one here on's fighting's name is Craig. What's the other one's name? Cat. <laughs> oh, They're Craig and Cat. Got it. Craig and Cat. They're a couple. That's, sounds like a sounds like a sitcom. Yeah, so it's probably it sounds like a, Yeah, sounds like a terrible CBS comedy. I mean we probably would have fact is even though we didn't overtly say it, we probably would have asked around town like about the creatures that scream like women oh. and probably would have gotten it. Yes. Um, yes, you would have, um, actually you would have gotten information on this from the map maker. It would have been written in the like margin of the map. He would have put it in. These would have been mentioned, um, with a warning about using magic against them. Um, so I don't know if that would have changed what you did, but that would be there. Um, uh -oh. there, it does mention yetis. It does mention the blizzards, it tells you not to move during blizzards. Um, um, as you, it mentions getting further north, if you can find water, fishing is a good way to find food. Um, uh, polar bears. Uh, what else is here? 
Does it say how cuddly they are? Polar bears. Does it give a cuddle, cuddle factor for bears. all of the animals? Um, it doesn't give a cuddle factor for all the animals, but it, there is a note there that it says if the polar bear does not have a bottle of Coca Cola, don't approach it. Oh. Yeah. Don't oh. <laughs> animals are bottle, ranked. If it has a bottle of Coca Cola, go ahead and approach it. It will probably share with you. <laughs> animals are are ranked by your ability to cut them open and sleep inside them at night. Oh, yeah, how high is the Tauntaun on that level? <laughs> honestly, honestly, these these cats would be a good. I mean, they're ten feet long and about eight feet tall. This would be a good creature to cut open and sleep inside of if you were that Jesus. desperate. Nice and furry. Yeah. Note to self: like I need a new jacket. Than... Might not be a bad harvesting thing. All right. Anyway. Thanks to everybody for hopping on with us today. Uh, we had about ten people in chat, which was well in the in the audience, which was really nice. It's good to see. Uh, we had that a lot number. of fun today too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun, as usual. Nice to see that number growing a little bit. Um, we are all on Twitter. I am Tom M. Norman. JC is Wildfire Twelve Sixty Five. Genius is Lazy Dragon GB, and Cooch is Crazy Cooch. We are Two Nerds One Quest on Twitter as well. Number Two Nerds Number One Quest. Uh, give us some support. Share this with everybody else that you know. Tell them about the show. Tell them about how fun it is. Uh, lie if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, give us a rating. Give us uh, some stars. Give us write us some reviews. Uh, we'd actually love to hear what you have to say. Join us in our Discord. Uh, let us know how we're doing in our Discord. Uh, put the links in in our uh, chat and I'll put it in right now costs you absolutely nothing and we talk about things other than D&D &D. we have video games talk and show talk and all that stuff so join us in our discord um, last but not least patreon.com slash tuners one quest we have some really cool levels and rewards for you if you come and join us and have fun doesn't cost you an arm and a leg and i just added uh dm chat once a month with mr dmjc for however long he sees fit 60 to 90 minutes just to sit down discord ask him questions talk about whatever it doesn't have to be even dnd &D, i guess if you don't want to uh no i'm game to talk about just about anything yeah and he will talk about just about anything is that gonna be on <laughs> twitch uh no it will not be on Twitch. It'll be because it's for a Patreon level. It'll be just you guys and yeah. him. It'll be a, a personalized, not personalized, but it'll be like a, a private private group. I'm going to be setting locked that room, room up. Yeah, it'll be a locked room in our Discord. DM unplugged. Yeah, DM unplugged. And that was a plug for it. DM unplugged, plugged. <laughs> With that being said, <laughs> for JC. And for Cooch, and for the Lazy Dragon, I am Norm. Rock on. I had two pens in there, huh? <laughs> and about, you know, three, three pieces of coin now.